Hi, thank you guys for coming. We're gonna start now. Um, thank you all of you guys for showing up and being so excited and passionate about this. It really makes this worth doing. Um, so as we get started, I want to introduce um, Miku Paul, who is a Wabanaki writer and activist, and they are going to come and do a quick land acknowledgement before we do some more demands and songs and whatnot. So thank you, Miku. Danagak, how are you? Ndolewis Miku Paul. Nuja Old Town, Nudabex Wallace Talk, Kings Clear First Nations, Chikwabanaki. Wallagiskot, it's a beautiful day. Let us all take a moment now to acknowledge that we are standing on indigenous land. The first peoples who resided here thousands of years before the arrival of the Europeans. We are still here. Surviving in the dawn land. Wabanaki were driven from the land you stand on so that greed could be given free reign and all resources extracted regardless of need. We are here today to raise our voices for Mother Earth, the mother of us all. Before colonization, our people lived in right harmony with the mother who provided for all our needs. Our vision for the land is as a relation, not as an object of exploitation. Now we are in a deep struggle to protect that which sustains our very lives. We all have a chance to walk the good road and remember that her needs are our needs. Everything is connected. Nothing less than transformation will save her. Jay Williwani, I thank you for your efforts, for being here today, and all you do to teach others, to inspire adults with your passion for the mother of us all. Akwanu, thank you, all my relations. Hello, my name is Anna Siegel, and I'm the Maine State Lead from U.S. Youth Climate Strikes. Thank you so much for joining us here today. I'd like to start by seeing who's in the crowd. Please give me a shout if you're from King Middle School. Wayne Fleet High School. Lincoln Middle School. Friends School of Portland. Over there. Um, Bates College. Lyman Moore, <laughs> Baxter Academy, <laughs> Colby College, <laughs> Chevrolet <Shepherds> High School, <laughs> Yarmouth High School, <laughs> Portland High School, <laughs> Waldorf High School, <laughs> Freiburg Academy. <laughs> Ava Gleason. A Ava goes to Scarborough High School and is uh, her school's environmental officer and her garden club coordinator. Hi everyone, so my name is Ava Gleason as you just heard. Um, so it took me a while to decide what I was actually going to talk to um, you guys about today. I wasn't gonna, I wanted to say more than the oceans are rising and the oceans are becoming more acidic and the temperatures are rising and the weather is getting worse and worse. I finally decided I want to talk about us, climate activists. 
I don't know if any of you have heard the term acti climate anxiety or activist burnout. So here's a quick definition. Activist burnout is when your physical and mental health begin to deteriorate due to extreme activism, causing you to lose interest in your movement. And climate anxiety is just what it sounds like. These are not things to be ashamed of, seriously. What we are doing is amazing and difficult. It is hard to stay hopeful when we are constantly getting notifications on our phone that remind us that there is yet another catastrophic weather event that is ruining the lives of many people and ruining Earth's precious ecosystems. We are trying to fix the mistakes of our previous generations. We, who ignored the climate crisis, climate crisis, our disposable culture, and our lack of environmental policies and regulations. My point is, it is okay to feel hopeless sometimes, and sometimes you will feel like your activism does not have a purpose. But I'm telling you, it does. We are standing up and doing what is right. We are protecting the future generations, something that was not done for us. So keep going and know that you are not a bad activist or you're not failing as an activist if you feel this way. Um, I'm going to leave you with a quote from a fellow climate activist and young politician, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, or AOC. We can't change the past, but we can change the future. So before our nation stands a choice to wring our hands, fear the future, and allow fear and anxiety to paralyze us into inaction, or we can choose the immense rise to the immense challenge ahead as we have many times in our f history and go all in to prepare and invest and heal because we choose to stand by the principle that our country and our planet is too precious to give up on. We choose the latter. Thank you all for being here. We got this. Um, I would like to introduce our next speaker, um, Diana. She is from New Jersey, but attends Bates College where she's an environmental studies major. There she works the, with the Environmental Coalition and Maine Youth for Climate Justice. Her goal in life is to spread love, kindness, and fight for an equitable world. Hi, everyone! Hi! Woo! Okay. So, I promise this is gonna end happy, but first, we need to talk about some serious things. Um, climate change is the greatest crisis facing humanity, period. Period, period. 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 exactly, period. period. It'll affect the lives of people from every part of the world, from every economic class, from every ethnic group, and every other identity. Not only will every person be affected, but existing inequality will be amplified. That means that people of color, low-income people, women, children, and other marginalized groups will be the most affected, even though they contribute the least to the problem. Let that sink in, because that's terrifying. <laughs> um, we didn't ask to inherit such a messed up world, but it's what we got. And we have to work towards positive change now. For centuries, American society and other first world countries have used a system of exploitation to concentrate wealth in a very small percentage of the population. And that has been to the detriment of humans and the environment. There have always been poor people and very rich people, and now we believe that that is the only way in which the world can work. But it's not! It's not! We can break this vicious system and create a better world. Although the climate crisis can seem unapologetically destructive and hopeless, I would challenge all of us to see it as an opportunity. As we adapt to climate change, we'll make decisions about where people live, what those buildings look like, we'll improve public transportation, power the world through renewables, and change countless other infrastructure systems. As we make those decisions, we also decide if we continue to segregate communities, pollute disproportionately, and exclude people from the decision-making process. Instead, we have to operate from a place of equity, community, and empathy. But what does that look like? What does that actually look like? It looks like having true representation in the environmental movement. That's us! That's us! It means people in office 
working with local communities to create sustainable change. It means making policy decisions that reflect science and community experience, not the interests of large corporations and the fossil fuel industry. Yes. It means the United States finally taking responsibility for our huge impact on global pollution and environmental destruction. That might sound completely radical to some people, but all I want you to think about is how can we make the world better tomorrow than it is today? Obviously, what we've done thus far is not working, and I hope with all my heart that our generation will be the one that breaks free from the greed-fueled mistakes of the past. This will not be easy, it will not be fast, but it will be magnificent to see. Yeah. So, here's that happy ending I promised. One day, every child will have access to clean air, good food, health care, quality education, and the opportunity to be whoever they want to be. That future is possible, but only, only if we work for it today. Thank you. I would love to introduce our next speaker, Luke Sakara Flanders. He's a junior at Freiburg Academy, and he's the Portland hub of the Sunrise Movement, a main seed with seeds of peace, and he's on the planning committee for the Maine Environmental Change Makers Network, as well as the co-founder of Community Water Justice. So can you get a strong round of applause for Luke? Hey, everyone. Thanks, Diana. I appreciate it. All right, as she just said, my name's Luke, and I'm here representing the Portland hub of the Sunrise Movement, as well as Community Water Justice. For those, for those of you who aren't yet familiar with Sunrise, Sunrise is a nationwide youth-led movement that is built around the intersections between climate justice and social justice, with the goal of pushing for the Green New Deal and holding our leaders accountable to the interests of our youth, our environment, and our future. Regardless of the I political identities you all may hold, your knowledge on the climate crisis, or even your level of experience in activism, you are here because you recognize a failure in our government and our society. A failure which we have had the knowledge and ability to fix for over 50 years, but have not. An irresponsible corporate influence on our political system has become a massive barrier to progress and now it has become a threat to our very survival. I am first and foremost a water activist and live in a frontline community. One of the biggest threats we are facing in Maine is the private ownership of our public water sources. Poland Spring, the bottled water brand owned by Nestle is extracting unsustainable and unprecedented amounts of water from rural communities while manipulating our government to sustain their profit. Aside from the massive carbon footprint of the bottled water industry, the legalized theft of our water is a threat that has to be dealt with immediately. As water shortages and natural disasters become more common on a global scale, we have to recognize that exploiting our most valuable resources for the sole purpose of increased profits is not the solution. In the State House, there are paid Nestle employees on the Board of Environmental Protection and the Maine Drinking Water Program. Right. That's right. Nestle has also had financial ties to members of the Public Utilities Commission. On top of that, the bottled water industry is deeply tied to the fossil fuel industry. In the U.S. alone, the bottled water industry used 76 million barrels of oil for manufacturing and distribution in a single year. Also, that's right. <laughs> also, on a global scale, more than 22 billion plastic water bottles entered the waste stream. Most of that plastic ended up in landfills, the oceans, and our waterways. We can... <laughs> We cannot trust powerful corporations like Nestle who took lessons from the fossil fuel industry and whose main motivator is profit to act with our best interests at heart. They are both complicit in the destruction of our environment. 
I have engaged and testified to our elected leaders, yet too often felt completely ignored once the conversation was over. That is a common feeling amongst us. Young people are seizing the reins of the climate and water justice movements because we are left with no other choice. I should not have to be speaking up here to you right now, but I am. Elected leaders, can you hear me now? Yeah. Elected leaders, can you hear us now? Sunrise Movement and Community Water Justice are part of a growing alignment of young people, of all abilities and identities, supported by our elders, that will confront the corrupt systems that are destroying our generation's right to a healthy future. And as beautiful as it is to see you all here, I feel equally frustrated. You all are a representation of hope. Hope and vision is the fuel of our movement, but we now know that hope is not enough. For those of you who are able, this alignment needs you to take the energy that exists here back to your communities and affect the changes that we all need. We all need. <laughs> we all need to reassess our priorities if we want to curb this crisis. This might mean a sacrifice from some of you, but that is what is needed. If you currently have investments in the bottled water or fossil fuel industries, we need you to divest. Hey, retirees, the Even Maine's pension fund has investments in the oil industry. Will you put pressure on them to divest? We are in the midst of a new dawn, and it's a new day here in the land where the sun first rises. And as we know, if Maine goes, so goes the nation. Thanks. And also, if you'd uh, like to connect with Community Water, Just Water Justice or Sunrise Movement, um, we're very accessible. Um, you can reach out to us on, so follow us on social media, or uh, yeah, join the movement. All right, so next up, we've got some singers, uh, people from uh, Sunrise Movement who are going to lead us in song. A couple of rounds, so give them a massive round of applause. All right, folks, so we're going to teach you a song. We'll do a little call and response first. And then we can do it together. All right, should we do the first part? Sure, uh, yeah. All right. People gonna rise like the water. We're gonna calm this crisis down. The people gonna rise like the water. We're gonna calm this crisis down. Next. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying climate justice now. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying climate justice now. All together. The people gonna rise like the water. We're gonna find this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying climate justice now. The people gonna rise like the water, we're gonna calm this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying climate justice now. One more time. People gonna rise like the water, we're gonna calm this crisis down. I hear the voice of my great granddaughter saying climate justice now. All right. All right. All right, we got another one for you. It's called Solid as a Rock. If you already know it, if you already know it, join in. If you don't, we're going to teach it to you. So, uh, ready? Yes. Solid as a rock. Solid as a rock. Rooted as a tree. Rooted as a tree. We are here. We are here. Standing strong. Standing strong. In our rightful place. Solid as a rock, solid as a rock, rooted as a tree, rooted as a tree. We are here, we are here, standing strong, standing strong, in our rightful place, in our rightful place. Solid as a rock, solid as a rock, 
Rooted as a tree. We are here. Standing strong. In our rightful place. Solid as a rock. Rooted as a tree. We are here. Standing strong. In our rightful place. Um, the next speaker is Jess Valero. They are 22 years old and they are an activist with Extinction Rebellion and a founding member of the People's Housing Coalition and they are currently experiencing homelessness. Jess Valero. Hello everybody, I'm Jess. Growing up, I didn't know much about climate change. I knew there was this blue bin that I was supposed to throw my bottles in so they could be melted down into new bottles. I knew that I should turn off my lights to conserve energy. And I knew I should recycle my paper so I wasn't wasteful. But I didn't take those things seriously. I knew animals were going extinct. I knew the ice caps were melting. I knew our water supply was polluted. And I knew our air was polluted. I had heard about the climate emergency and its serious effects on the planet, but that gave me anxiety, so I pushed it away. Until I could no longer push it away anymore. Our world is dying. We're in the middle of the sixth mass extinction in history. And it's our own doing. We have turned our cheeks and all the injustices in our society and now we are turning our cheek on the future of our planet. We are turning our cheek on the future of our children. We are allowing them to go into a future where we may not have a planet and we are passively watching from the sidelines. About a year ago, I became an activist and I learned the of my voice. of my voice could cause ripples in our world and change people's lives. I learned that we must stand up for ourselves and others and fight for what's right. And today, I'm lifting my voice to urge our leaders to save my future, to save our planet. My generation and the generation after me will suffer the effects of this emergency. My Aunt Lisa has a baby due in February. This is a big thing for my family. Her mother, my grandmother, had seven miscarriages and the fact that my aunt has a healthy childhood in her womb is a miracle. My friend Courtney just had a baby two weeks ago. Her name is Daisy Mae Florence and she's absolutely beautiful but I'm a little biased. Well, our leaders are talking about this issue, we have 10 years to save our planet. There's no debate, there's just science. We must act now. There's no time for the usual route. This is why I'm raising my voice. To save the future, I'm working so hard to build to protect the future of my friends, and to save our generation from extinction. Children can no longer just be children. We have the weight of the world on our shoulders. For my future and for the future of the next generation, we must meet the strike demands and protect the planet we all live on. For what does it say about us if we refuse to right our wrongs and save our planet and thus our children's future? The blood is on our hands. Our next speaker will be Muskan Verma from the Himalayas in India. She went to high school at WC Atlantic College in Wales, UK. Currently a junior at Bates College. Rhetoric film, screen studies, and theater, double major. Also one of the Sunrise Hub coordinators for Bates College. Pronouns, she and her. 
Hi everyone! Okay, first of all, thank you so much for being here. Um, it is so important uh, for a person like me who uh, is pretty cynical on days um, to see this and finally feel hope, uh, especially on a sunny day, right? Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Muskan. I use she, her pronouns. I am currently at Bates College. I'm a junior. Um, but I am originally from the Himalayas in India. And whenever I tell people that, the first thing people say is, oh my God, that must be beautiful. And they're not wrong, it is. Um, something else I have to tell you about myself is that the main source of income for my family is farming. We have apple orchards. So I have been a part of the sustainability or climate action movement for as long as I can remember now. Even before I knew I was a part of it, I was a part of it because, see, being a person from the Himalayas, having agriculture as my main source of income, and in the last 20 years of my existence, seeing climate and weather patterns change drastically in the Himalayas has really um, put all the weight of the climate change a crisis on my shoulders and something I always say is that I see the the effects the problems of climate change on a day-to-day -day basis and all I'm trying to do is not have other people have to go through the same thing I every year Every year, uh, the climate patterns, the weather patterns, the snowfall patterns back home are different. These past few years, our crops have been destroyed because of the irregular snowfall patterns. This year, finally, we had some good crops, but in India, we have droughts and floods, so nobody's gonna buy them. And I have to make decisions on a daily basis in my life for what I can buy, what I can do with my life, how much money I can spend, because these are the real direct effects of climate change. And people in the cities, people in the more developed places, they won't get to see these problems and these effects until it's too late. And all I'm trying to do here is stop it before it's too late. For 20 years, I have lived on this planet. And honestly, I hope to live another 20 years, more, maybe more. Um, and I have plans for my future, honestly, I do. But humans are really ruining it for me. And I'm not going to take that. I want all of you to do a small thing for me. I want you to close your eyes. Everyone, please close your eyes. And I want you to think of a person you love a place from your childhood, or if you're a child now, that you love. I want you to think about all the people who are standing around you. And I want you to think about the people who don't even have the privilege to do this because they are caught up in the daily cycles of oppression that capitalism has brought to them. I want you to think about them. And then I want you to see them vanish right before your mind's eyes. That is what we are fighting against. It doesn't matter what you believe in, doesn't matter what political standings you have. You know, nothing matters once it's going to affect all of us. But the thing is, and thing we have to remember as ordinary people is, that it is going to affect us first. The billionaires, and there's not many of them, by the way. The billionaires are going to be the ones who will, who will be able to run away from it for as long as possible. I mean, it's still going to catch up to them, but it's going to catch up to us first. Which is why we need to fight every single day. This, this rally is, should not be your last stop. You should be willing to go talk to people in your lives, talk to your representatives, people who will not take money from fossil fuel companies and corporations.
and you have to learn to be uncool by working for climate action because you know what i'm cool with being uncool as long as the earth isn't getting hotter finally this is an emotional thing it is a problem and it's totally okay to feel that sometimes i think it's very important to take care of yourselves so all i'm going to say is take care of the world take care of each other but also take care of yourselves and think of yourselves and think of all the other people who don't have the privilege to be here to have a voice and then be the voice for them something that sunrise movement always focuses on is we need two things people power which is right here and political power which is also right here so let's really show all of those rich powerful so called powerful people how much power we have let's do this thank you so very much i will now introduce the amazing amazing human that's coming after me name's anna segal she's 13 years old god i wish i was as cool as her when i was 13 right um and she is a student at Fre at the friends of school portland last year she was an organizer for the march 15th climate strike and rally and has since built a team to work on climate strikes across the stage so let's welcome her and just keep my words with you yeah before before i begin i'd like to uh break with a really fun chant it goes U G L Y big oil you cheat and lie you ugly yeah yeah you ugly yeah yeah B U G L Y big oil you cheat and lie you ugly yeah yeah you ugly yeah yeah U G L Y big oil you cheat and lie you ugly yeah yeah you ugly yeah yeah U G L Y big oil you cheat and lie you ugly yeah yeah you ugly yeah yeah thank you and then one more 2 4 6 8 we want renewables in our state 2 4 6 8 we want renewables in our state 2 4 6 8 we want renewables in our state 2 4 6 8 we want renewables in our state I want to begin by recognizing our role in the global movement. Here in Portland, we are echoing what is happening around the world on this day. Over 900 actions were planned for this Friday in the US alone, in every single state including Puerto Rico and Washington DC. Across the world, September 20th strikes have already happened because of time differences. updates have happened mere hours ago in australia over 300,000 students and workers went on strike the city of hamburg germany had 50,000 students on strike and hundreds of countries and thousands of actions have followed or will follow including us we are a part of that force and that power and we are using that power and energy to drive forward a sense of urgency that is why right here we will be presenting a climate emergency resolution to city officials i'd like to i'd like to invite any city councilors or mayors from portland and south portland that we've invited to this event to join me up here to when we will be we will be handing the demands off shortly so please come this way. Thank you. A climate emergency resolution is a document calling upon anything from local to national governments to put environmental legislation on the fast track and to think farther ahead than just their years in office. This rally is not the end of an organizing effort. It is the beginning of an exciting campaign. Right now marks the start of the push. to have the cities of Portland and South Portland declare a climate emergency. 
and then we will spread that declaration to a state level. Can we do it? Yeah. Now we will be reading off the demands we have. These aren't long shot goals or abstract ideas. These are real things that need to happen now to act upon the climate crisis. The demands are supported by Maine Youth Climate Strikes, Maine Youth for Climate Justice, 350 Maine, Maine People's Alliance, Toxics Action Center, Sierra Club Maine, Maine Youth Action Network, Extinction Rebellion Maine, Bath Iron Works Conversion Campaign, and Maine Youth Environmental Association. The first demand is going to be read by Piper Christina. Piper is a 12-year-old 7th grader at Lyman Moore Middle School. Transform our economy to 100% clean renewable energy by 2030 and phase out all fossil fuel extraction through a just and equitable transition, creating millions of new jobs. A halt to all leasing and permitting for fossil fuel extraction, processing, and infrastructure projects immediately. I'm all done. <laughs> Uh, okay, who should I hand this to? Hi. Thank you. The next demand is respect of indigenous land and sovereignty. Honor the treaties protecting indigenous lands, waters, and sovereignty by the immediate halt of all construction, leasing, and permitting for resource extraction, processing, and infrastructure projects affecting or on indigenous lands. The second part to that is to recognize the rights of nature into law, to protect our sacred ecosystems and align human law with natural law, to ban resource extraction in defense of our environment and our people. We also demand environmental justice. That means a transition that invests in prosperity for communities on the front lines of poverty and pollution. That also means welcoming those displaced by the cumulative effects of the climate crisis, economic equality, violence, and lack of opportunity. We must also protect and restore our biodiversity. That means protection and restoration of 50% of the world's lands, oceans, and stop all deforestation by 2030. We demand implementation of sustainable agriculture, where we invest in farmers in regenerative agriculture, and we end subsidies for industrial agriculture. We call upon Portland and South Portland to declare a climate crisis within the boundaries of their governmental jurisdictions. We implore these two cities, Portland and South Portland, to pass a climate emergency resolution and to make this resolution the framework for their response to the climate crisis. My name is Ethan Strimling. I'm the mayor of the city of Portland and I'm joined here by city councilors from surrounding communities. I just want to say to you, thank you so much for your activism today. We accept your demands and we will act on your demands. City councilors, can you please come forward and introduce yourselves? Uh, Pius Ali, Portland City Councilor. Susan Henderson, South Portland City Councilor. Hi, Maxine Beecher, South Portland City Councilor. And I want to say this to you. This, this is heartwarming to see all these people here with their signs. I want to tell you in South Portland, we have the Blue Skies Ordinance that does wonders for keeping our air clean. We also have no pesticides now. So you can help too. Okay. Hey, so um, we ask you to uh, repeat after like each line so that we are all part of this. Is that cool? Okay. All right. One, two, three. We're gonna rise up rise up till it's one we're gonna rise up rise up till it's one when the people rise up 
the powers come, come down. down. When the people rise up, the powers come Here down. We we're gonna, they're gonna stop us, but we keep coming back. They're gonna stop us, but we keep coming back. We're gonna rise up, rise up till it's one. We're gonna rise up, rise up till it's one. We're gonna rise up, rise up till it's one. We're gonna rise up. Rise up till it's one. When the people rise up, the powers come down. The powers come down. Go one more time. When, when the, the people, people rise up, the powers come. The powers come down. <laughs> they try to stop us, but we keep coming back. They try to stop us. But we keep coming back. Cool. And then the. Yeah. Woo! Okay. Yeah. Okay. Say, say a couple of words. Oh, no, that's okay. All right, yeah. Yeah, I think that should be it. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Again, thanks everyone for coming. And the momentum does not stop here. A great way to stay updated and get involved is to follow us on social media. You can find Main Strikes. Maine Youth for Climate Justice and 350 Maine on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thank you so much. I'd also like to thank the mayors and the city councilors for coming. Thank you for accepting our climate emergency resolution and our demands.